Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to Deliver Us Mars, where we're totally about to do something stupid in order to try to sneak into the mission that we're not supposed to be attending. Yeah, that's the security gate that we can't get through. We're just going to have to find a way around that, aren't we? Alright, let's go find another way into Maria's office. That's called lying, Ayla. Let's go. Apparently, as many people have pointed out to me, um, Kathy here is actually 18 or 19 years old. Because if she was 10 when she was on the moon, and this is eight years later, that, that doesn't make her 15 jingles. <laughs> what can I say? Maths is hard. I should have been a stripper. This is all very nice. This is the WSA Globe. Oh, so it looks like there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can investigate. Collect information about. Okay, fair enough. Get to the meeting with Maria. Find a way inside the restricted area. If you're ever unsure about what you're supposed to be doing or where you're supposed to be going, just press C. It puts your mission objective up on screen, as well as gives you a waypoint. So this is the low security area of the World Space Agency. And I seem to be heading in the opposite direction of where this meeting is being held. The museum. Yeah, we can cut through here to Maria's. Might be fun to have a look around too. Not been here in ages. Yeah, this should be good. Worth a look. It's like the, uh, the lunar buggy from the Apollo missions. What else have we got? Looks like no one has. Anything on the wall? Bunch of buttons I can press, let's see. In 2041, the lunar MPT dish helped diminish the planet's energy crisis by massively increasing energy yields. After the great blackout of 2054 and the instigation of Mission Fortuna, Rolf Robertson made his way to the moon base to restart the MPT, giving his life in the process. The WSA really is trying their best to help our world with our energy needs. I'm sure we'll get to help the entire population someday. Oh, it, it looks like this museum. Microwave power technology is a revolutionary form of energy absorption I'll wait until and distribution. Talk. The Lunar MPT, along with the 42 Earth-based MPT receivers, helped stop the growing energy crisis of the 2030s. MPTs. My jam. Yeah, I got absolutely is... fascinated by it when I saw my dad working on it every day. He really saved this planet when he designed this. Basically, this museum is just a big exposition dump. After the success of Mission Fortuna, Claire Johansson spearheaded Mission Vestia to provide manpower to the Lunar MPT and bring Rolf's body back home. Claire and her team discovered WSA software engineer Sarah Baker critically injured in cryosleep. Isaac Johansson, one of the three Lunar Council members and core Atwood instigators, took the last arc and escaped. That's the last time I saw Dad. I'm fine. Just remembering it always feels... I'm fine. This is the game's way of explaining what happened in the previous game without explaining what happened in the previous game. Um, that's a very cool way of doing it. And that's Rolf's space. So Rolf dies at the end of the first game. Sorry, spoilers, I know. Um, uh, saving Sarah Baker, who's in suspended animation, the only surviving person left on the moon. And this is the story of how it all happened, keeping you up to date with the events from the first game. After the Great Blackout catapulted the Earth back into an energy crisis, Claire Johansson, Maria Gonzalez, and Rolf Robertson undertook Mission Fortuna, a manned rocket mission to discover the Blackout's cause. Robertson, under the guise of Johansson and Gonzalez, refueled and reconnected the MPT dish. Claire really had such a big hand in reviving the WSA. Yeah, this is all just a recap of the first game, but in a, in a very cool way, I have to say. Although I believe I'm probably reading it all in the wrong order, or listening to it all in the wrong order. I think this was supposed to be the second thing that we came to. Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Right, we've got a meeting to attend that we're totally not supposed to be attending. Oh, 
I do like, I mean, this does feel like an actual NASA museum. Oh, hang on, there's more in here. You know, looking at these names on the wall, I thought they might have been members of the moon base who escaped or ran away from Project Outward. But looking at some of the names, they these might be maybe original Kickstarter supporters of the first game. I don't know. But there's a couple of names on there that look like internet names rather than actual names. Oh, here we go. The villains. Devised by the Lunar Council members sometime before the Great Blackout, Project Outward saw the evacuation of nearly all Moonbase residents on board three large spacefaring vessels known as ARCs. The location of the traitorous council members, as well as the rest of the Moonbase crew, remains unknown. My dad designed and built most of the ARCs that they used. Like almost everything else here at the WSA. It was supposed to be an escape plan for the colony if something ever went wrong. Yeah, and then your dad took an arc for himself. Condemning hundreds of people to die. Because he's an arsehole. Ayla, give that door a try and see if we get lucky. Oh right, we get to control Ayla, the drone. Or the ASE. I have no idea what that stands for. <laughs> oh, that didn't work. Well, worth a try. Oh, that was handy. Oh, hi, Mark. Yeah, hi, Mark. We're just going to slip in through this door that you left open. Thank you very much. On the shoulders of giants. Who are they? Oh, these are the um, characters from the first game. That's the guy that you played, Rolf Robertson. Maria Gonzalez, she was your mission controller. Claire Johansson, your sister. Looking good, sis. <laughs> and Sarah Baker, Rolf's partner. And the one who was... They really need to change these. Oh wow, that's her. I like nothing like that anymore. Are you joking? You look so good still. Thanks, I try. You? Trying anything? Yeah, right. I just, I meant that, like, Thanks. you... Never have to Come on, Alex. Try. <sighs> Are you headed to Maria's office? No, why? Oh, I'm just going the same way, so... Hey, I was just looking at a few of the Mission Fortuna exhibits on my way over here. That's good. How long were you actually stationed on the moon? I was on the space station, mostly. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, that's why I never saw you on the surface, I guess. I saw you. Oh, really? When I did software upgrades for Rose's ASE. Oh, yeah, ACE. No, ASE. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, <laughs> I named it ACE because I didn't get that ASE was an acronym, so I just kept calling it ACE, and Rosie would just start doing that too. It's kind of a confusing name, I guess. <laughs> right. Yours is named Alex, right? Where are you headed to? Wait, wait, you didn't answer my question yet. Uh, question? About how long you were stationed on the moon. You want the years with the forced cry asleep or without? Sorry, I didn't mean to. I really just need to get to the meeting. I just wanted to apologize for what happened with my dad. I, I know he didn't mean what he did. I think that's why he tried to save you on the moon. Save me? Your dad did not... Kathy, I don't want to be disrespectful, but what your dad and the Lunar Council did, they, they left us here to rot. They committed the worst crimes imaginable against humankind and our planet. They deserve to be punished for what they've done. Am I interrupting something? No. No. 
Thanks to an entire backlog of precedents, I know not to be surprised to see you here. If I made it this far, you might as well just let no. me... No. Maria's gonna be on video! You no! Know. Okay, I bet you guys rehearse that. We totally did. I like being a rebel. Let's go. Six years. What? On the moon. It was six years. I'm sorry I didn't answer your question earlier. Right. Thanks. Kathy's meaningful look towards the windows on the opposite side of the room leads me, uh, leads me to believe that that's probably where I should be going in order to get in. So how am I getting in there? Find a way. Okay, so I can see there's a vent up there that I'm probably going to have to send Hayler into. Oh, here we go. And laser my way through the vent here. While I'm doing that, I, I do feel like I have to speak up in my defence regarding the um, gross miscalculation of young Kathy's age here, because I thought she was about 14 or 15, when in fact she's probably 18 or 19, but she looks like she's 14 or 15, that's my issue. Plus, have you seen all of the other character models, all of the other characters? Ryan looks like a teenager with a fake beard. Claire looks like a teenager. Sarah looks like a teenager. All of the character models look like teenagers. So, I mean, yeah, all right. I couldn't add eight to ten. <laughs> like I said, maths is hard. I should have been a stripper. <laughs> but in my defence... Oh, hang on, I must have missed a cut. Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, in my defence, everybody looks like they're a high schooler. It's not just me. Right, so what's going on in here? Let's have a look around. Alright, what does this do? It's going to move something. That's where I need to be. And this moves that platform. Alright. So... This moves that one up. Is it not quickly? Oh, it's tough. It's not pressure sensitive or anything, is it? Let's try again. This time without being on it. Bring it down. Send it back up. Oh no, that's just as high as it goes. It, it doesn't stop if there's a weight on it. And why would it stop if there was a weight on it? Clearly it's a platform for moving stuff up. Can I get down underneath it through the floor? Maybe? Because I don't see how this helps. I have to get up there. It's telling me to use the flashlight. Does that mean that there's something in a dark corner that I need to use? Let's send Ace looking around. Sorry, not Ace. Ayla. So that's where it doesn't have its own cutting tool. So I have to get up there to cut the bolts. How am I going to do that? Not seeing anything obvious around here. Right. Well, this is another one of those moments where I'm going to put a, a swift edit in to hide the fact that this totally kept me occupied for about 10 minutes until I figured it out. Uh, and it's actually pretty simple. Uh, as these kind of puzzles usually are. So, here's what you do. With the vertical platform raised, you jump onto it while triggering the horizontal platform and then quickly jumping over to it before it's too far away. And here, you now need to jump onto that fuel tank, whatever it is. I mean, not exactly too Raider, but it did still take me a couple of minutes. This does not bode well for the rest of the game. <laughs> right. Now, I could probably get up there, but we'll send Ayla in. Right. 
Ayla can record the conversation and navigates these uh, pipes way better than I ever could. Oh, sounds like we're getting closer. Here it is. Absolutely certain. So it must be them. Yes. We feel that we can safely assume that Project Albert sent this signal directly to us. Intentionally. I... can't believe it. They're on Mars? What? Seemingly have been for the last 13 years. Closer than any of us could have imagined. You okay? Can't imagine this must be easy to hear with everything I'm else. fine. I'm fine. I assume we can find a justified mission up for then? Mission Opera? Since we pulled Sarah and Kathy from the moon, we've been formulating a contingency plan, should we discover Outward's location. During Mission Vestia, we found indications that the three ARC vessels Outward used to leave the moon weren't just for transportation. Our information leads us to believe these three ARCs actually form a shrine, a completely self-reliant settlement. But why reach out? Why now? Is it a distress signal or an invitation? Doesn't matter. Mission Opera has only one objective. Bring the Arcs and their revolutionary technology back home. We should analyze the distress signal. Maybe we can determine the encryption used. We're working on it as we speak. I can enable terminal access in the back office. See what you make of it. Ada, quick. Find a way inside that room. Perfect, Ayla, stay right there. What you're about to hear cannot leave this room, understood? Start by including Ryan and Sarah as part of the team. Not only do they excel in their respective fields, they're vital to me personally. I trust them both in my life. That leaves one more position to be filled. Yes. Hey. Hi. At the risk of sounding like an idiot, I think we should take Kathy. What? 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 She was leagues above the other graduates in our program. You mean, the only class of astronauts that we've had in the past ten years? It doesn't change the fact that she aced nearly every exercise, sometimes even doubling my scores. I know you want to keep her out of this, but she's the best MPT engineer we've got. We need her expertise. And look, I will deny ever saying this under oath, I might add. Kathy is the most talented individual the WSA is working for them. Apart from you two. And me, of course. We're not seriously discussing this, are we? I mean, she... She has no prior experience. She's a complete risk to the mission. Sarah's right. Kathy shouldn't be part of the team. There are too many factors involved. Hey, hey, Maria. Can I come in, please? Seriously? 
Please, Claire, let me be a part of the mission. Were you eavesdropping? Yeah, and I'm sorry for that, but Claire, you know I've proven myself to the WSA. Two concurrent science degrees, majored in stream tech, top marks in the astronaut training program, like Ryan said. Thanks for the kind words, by the way, mate. Sure. And you need my MPT expertise. Please, Claire, with you by my side, I know I can do this. We can do this. Plus, there's only like, what, three other trained astronauts to choose from, so... I think you should take her on the team, Claire. What? 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 Nice. She's one of the most qualified people we have at the WSA. However, the final say is yours, of course. Okay, Kathy. Even though L Ryan's last argument was severely lacking, yeah. Ouch. I believe you'll do everything you can to guarantee the mission's success. Right, Kat? Of course. Now I would like to go over the minutiae for the mission with Claire, Sarah, and Ryan. Can you let us handle this without listening in this time? Oh, well, seeing as I'm now. Kathy. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, looks like we're going to Mars. Probably shouldn't be surprised given that the game's called Deliver Us Mars, but we're going to Mars. A few months later. Check it out, Ma. My own spacesuit. For some reason, a pair of ice <laughs> climbing axes? Um, we're going to Mars, not Europa. I'm sure they're going to be very important, though. Based on the uh, all the imagery that I've seen of the game, those axes feature heavily. Is axe even the right word? It'll do. You're all snug in there, Ayla. You need anything? Cup of coffee? Magazine? You diva. <laughs> Who's this? Is that Sa that's Sarah, I think. Yes, judging by that scar, that is Sarah. You see what I mean about the character models, though? They all look like teenagers. <laughs> I mean, it's not just me, is it? Oh. You look nervous. Big sister. That also looks like a teenager. You? No, no. But seeing you, you're... Proud. A teenager with a weird head. <clears throat> hey. That scar on Sarah's stomach, is, is that the one Dad gave her? Yep. Yeah, why? Just curious. Knock, knock. You ready? Oh, and here's the... Teenager with a fake beard, Ryan. Yeah? Well, high schoolers, let's go to Mars. All of that coming up in the next episode. I'm really enjoying this game so far, and hopefully you guys are too, because that's it for today. As always, take care, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>